e na reo, e na hauifa, ki na rau rangatirama, uh, no mai haere mai kiki mai, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, latest blog uh, at this very um, important time for the profession because it's practising certificate renewal time. Uh, the round um, opened um, at the beginning of the month and it's really important that if you are practicing that you renew your practicing certificate the exciting thing for us is that this year we have our new um, my swrb portal um, the feedback we've been getting is that that's making things um, much smoother um, and the thing to remember about the practicing certificate is that you're making a declaration uh, that you're um, you're good to go in terms of your practice, you've been doing your CPD, that there are no issues. Um, if, if there are things that you have some questions about, uh, things that you think you might need to declare, do um, do please get in touch with us. Um, if you want to get hold of the team, uh, either via email, uh, which is applications at swrb.govt.nz, or on the phone, which is uh, 0508. 797269 uh, and they'll respond as, as soon as they can. Probably email uh, is is easiest with it and if you want to be called just letting us know what time we're available. We have got more staff on um, and we've got some extended hours so we're going from 8 until 6 each day to try and capture uh, the ends of the day when you are more likely to be able to um, be on the phone or, or emailing us rather than when you're out in the field. Um, so that's really the the um, the big uh, piece of work that we've got underway at the moment. Uh, and just remembering that um, it's important uh, that uh, if you're practicing, that you have your practicing certificate for the year ahead. Uh, so that's it from me. Um, Atewa. I wanted to bring to your attention something which has been on my heart probably since 2015, 2016. <laughs> so I'll get straight into it. Around 2015, 2016, we started to hear rumours around this new entity going on in Wellington that was a government or they were trying to angle to become a government entity and their idea was that they were going to bring social work as a redefinition of a social worker and that they were going to bring in all of these different elements for example how they educated social workers what they wanted social workers to be educated as and how they wanted to do it i believe it was around 2016 when they started to have groups going around to different areas most notably for myself when i participated in it south auckland and west auckland so they started these groups then well, fast forward a few years, and then as of the 27th of February, you are now, if you are someone who is a social worker or conducting yourself under the new definition of social worker, you must now be mandatorily registered under these new government entity. So some facts on the table. First and foremost, what is a social worker? Because of course we know that the social work aspect that is now newly defined. There is a definition of social worker. So just to let you know, as of the 27th of February, 2021, the title social worker will become protected, quote unquote protected. That means only social workers who are registered by the SWRB, the Social Worker Registration Board, can use the title social worker. Who must be registered? You need to be registered if you call yourself a social worker, are known as a social worker, or are held out to be a social worker. So that's who must be registered. But what does that mean? Well, it's quite broad, actually. So practicing social work can include any one or more of the following. 
working directly with clients, including whānau, hapu, and community, being involved with casework decisions at any level, managing and or supervising other social workers. If you apply your social work values, skills, ethics, and knowledge in your role, teaching social work practice or theory, and developing policy that impacts upon social work practice. Wow. So that's actually really broad. So what it's basically saying is if you're involved in community, whānau, family, if you're working in any sort of environment that we work in, then so be it. Many of you will know already that I have never called myself a social worker, that I've always said that I am a youth worker. That is quite accurate. I've always been a youth worker, not a social worker. Main reason being is a social worker has to have one foot in bureaucracy and one foot in the field. A youth worker has both the blessing and the curse of being fully in the field and being in a deep, intimate proximity with those they are empowering and equipping to take on the world, to take on the life. So there is actually a really big difference. Social workers, I respect most of them, not all of them, but most of them, and they do definitely have the ability to be able to get things done. In regards to when you consider those who have sat alongside youth in gutters and walked along in the streets, taken 1am, 3am calls at night, uh, those who have shed tears with them, those who have helped them speak and come out of suicidal ideation or suicidal activity right at that time, those who have been able to change decision-making from killing themselves and killing other people and making them, you know, deciding to go off into a liquor store, many times you'll find that the decision to not comes from those youth workers who are beside them. It's a powerful thing. It's a beautiful thing. This new definition puts them into this new bracket of social worker as well as youth advocates, as well as those who are just in the field, as well as those who are community workers. But shouldn't that be fine? You know, uh, What's wrong with that? Isn't it fine? Isn't it okay? Well, there is actually a little bit of an issue. I'm going to give what I see as the two or three main issues. Number one, this is a part of the source material that they utilize. Social workers use a range of indigenous and social work theories, methods and techniques drawn from a recognized social work qualification, training and experience. Their practice is based on Te Tiriti or Waitangi, the International Federation of Social Workers slash International Association of Schools of Social Work, Joint Global Definition of Social Work and Global Social Work Statement of Ethical Principles, the Aotearoa New Zealand Social Workers Association's Code of Ethics and the Social Workers Registration Board's Code of Conduct and Care Competence Structure. Standard, sorry. Alright, so that's what's there. Also, critically reflective supervision and continuing professional development are ongoing requirements of social work practice. Alright, first big glaring issue. Or rather, second one. The first one I find is that the definition of social worker takes up anything and everything. That worries me quite a bit. The second one is the source material, the standards that you must adhere to. It's missing massive, massive areas. When you consider the massive steps forward in terms of social care given by good quality providers such as the Catholic Church, such as Salvation Army, when you consider those areas and others like it, faith-based areas, they have removed and erased the very idea of the Bible being a massive guidance. Right now, you have faith-based youth counsellors in schools. This, this new definition, these new standards, remove that. They're outside of it. Therefore, anything that is biblical principle is also removed from it. It is worrying because there is a lack of a standard aspect in that. It becomes whatever is politically correct at the time will be what is regarded as the standard for youth work, social work, whatever they're calling it nowadays. 
if you are a Muslim youth worker, a community advocate for Muslim families, we all know exactly what's in the Quran in certain areas. Do they have to give up their belief system to be adhering to this other new form of belief system? It is actually really worrying because youth work, and I'm, I'm separating youth work from social work, youth work is, is incredibly diverse. It is incredibly intimate in terms of proximity to the issues that are needed to be worked on and worked through. But they cannot do this if they're just milk, if they're beige. It doesn't work that way. It might work for your traditional social worker whose job is actually oranga tamariki and they're just there to sort of keep things at an even keel. I can totally understand that. But when you're talking about in-depth, real youth work, heavy-duty work, or perhaps RIOP teams, okay, there, there has to be a much more stronger approach or, or coming from a guidelines. Don't forget, uh, something which is very basic for parents to understand is that the, the authority figures and the ones who are looked up to by young people need to be anchors in themselves. They need to have something solid to be able to stand by and stand on. And I know as, I, as soon as I say that, you're going to have people who are very strongly on the left of the American political system saying, oh, what about abused kids or anything like that. Well, in actual fact, just to let you know that one of the main researchers into that style of sexual abuse found that schools are more at risk than your average Christian church. Higher, much higher. It does not mean that we get rid of schools and that we cast all teachers down and accuse them of being horrific hebophiles or pedophiles or pederasts. No, not at all. But this is this new idea is incredibly dangerous in terms of what that's about. So carrying on. What else? What what's wrong with that, Elliot? You know, you okay, you've got some worried concerns about that. That seems valid. You're worried about the fact that the definition follows on. Well, here is my biggest one. And this is where it comes into a big of a problem. S13. S13. S13 means that if you are someone who has not studied social work qualifications, you have not gone to university to do the various degrees and, and follow through with those academics, they seem to give a bit of a this odd honorary social work qualification or, or practicing certificate for those who have got 10 to 15 years of practice. 10 to 15 years of practice. Now I tell you what, I have worked with youth workers. I have had, I've had people working under me who were far better than I am and I was far better because they've gone through hell they've gone through horrible times they have suffered greatly in their own personal lives they've come out they've been able to come out of where they were and they've been able to allow and bring over young people with their anecdotes their stories with their resilience with their ability to impart tools and resilience measures they're able to do that better than I can, better than any other social work I can. But they don't have the, I'm not sure if capacity is the right word, but they're not in school and they don't have the money. They don't have the ability to go through some type of social work study and course learnings. But this S13 that we'll have a look at, S13 is very much about, hey, no problem. If you've got 10 to 15 years experience, we'll allow you to be in this weird honorary area. It really does. It really bugs me, this S13. And the reason why, as well, is because, I'm sure this is not going to be a surprise, but there's money attached to this. You're going to find that there is a priceless, for every single year that you are now this new definition of social worker, they will demand that you pay so much money every single year. Now let's just have a look at the S13. S13 being that one which has got 10 to 15 years experience and somehow they're still not. They're only just given an honorary status. I find it quite disgusting. If you're an S13, if you're a person who needs to or wants to be registered, as everyone has to be mandated to be registered, then you've got to have 10 to 15 years experience 
It's got to be accepted by the SWRB, those people in Wellington who are now a government entity. And the first off, let's have a look. So if we were saying 2021, uh, registration, $345. Practicing certificate, $368. Disciplinary levy, $50. Stage 1 assessment, $276. Stage 2 assessment is $1,400. For, so for someone who might be a, you know, someone who might be a koro and she's gone through hell and she's got 10 kids and her kids have now got kids and she's also working with them as well as working for the NGO she works for. Well, she's going to have to come up with $2,439 for 2021. That's not including what she's going to have to pay next year or the year after or the year after or the year after or the year after. But you've got to understand, where well, how is this money used? Well, the money is used in a certain way. And it's this. It may be helpful to know that the SWRB uses the registration and practicing certificate fees to cover the costs of reviewing application forms and templates, responding to inquiries, running the website, submissions, undertaking consultation, developing policy, and holding board meetings. Come on. I've written submissions. It's taken me maybe about an hour to write on a computer. I could go to the net cafe and it would be fine. Holding board meetings. Yep, you just need a few packs of biscuits and some coffee and tea. Don't tell me it takes millions and millions and millions of dollars that you are going to make youth workers pay, that you are going to make NGOs pay, that you are going to make those areas pay. And Again, those who might be working for Oranga Tamariki or the DHBs, the heads and the department heads of that will probably pay it. And what happens at that point? Well, that means that it's taxpayer funded. I find this whole scenario so cynical. It is incredible that they are now taking more money from those who often work at a lower wage. I've seen on Career Force and the websites about how much these people make apparently. You know, I, I've seen, you know, social workers can get from fifty six thousand to eighty thousand dollars. I don't know what you're talking about, but youth workers can go for forty five thousand. 49,000, they can be actually at the 40,000 or they can even be below. And to charge them so much money every single year, I find it a disgraceful and disgusting way in which to treat those who are unheard heroes, those who are unsung heroes, those who put their lives on the line for us in the quiet, darker times of our nation. I want you to know about this. The SWRB is nothing less than a money-grubbing, grabbing... I've got some worse words, but I don't want to use them right now. But make no mistake, it's going to get hard. Wait for the NGOs that are going to have to get down or hand out even more so. Wait for the education factor that will make you demand to learn things that you really should not be learning. See how they take control and see how they get paid megabucks over it. We'll keep looking, we'll keep watching. In the meantime, God bless you. God bless your mahi. And God bless this nation of New Zealand.